Hello, 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 Dr. Jenkins here. This is our last lab. Congratulations, everyone. We're not done yet, but you are close. So that's good news. This is a lab, a very small little window into microbiology. So I just wanna do a little video to introduce some of the concepts. And then you are gonna watch some of the YouTube videos and then answer some questions, and then you'll be all set to go. As always, make sure you are reviewing what I have in bold and what is underlined. So make sure that you review the definition of microbiology. If you just break that word apart, micro means small and biology is the study of life. So microbiology is looking at the smallest organisms, the very, very tiny organisms that you cannot see with your naked eye, but indeed are there. And these microbes, these tiny organisms include bacteria, viruses, molds, fungus. Everyone's heard about bacteria and viruses, and especially now that we're going through this global pandemic of the COVID virus, we know that these are very small organisms. Sometimes they can have good purposes, many times they can have bad, as is the case with COVID virus. They are everywhere. They're in the air, they're on the surface of our cell phone, surface of our body, when you touch a doorknob. They're not all bad, but uh, certainly some of them can be such as COVID. Cool. Um, most of these microbes are what's called prokaryotic. And that's a fancy word that just means that each bacteria is a single cell. Uh, you may have seen the pictures of what COVID looks like. It's got these little spikes coming out of it. Well. Each little COVID virus is one cell. Each little bacteria, E. coli, salmonella, each little bacteria is only one cell, prokaryotic. Whereas humans, us, you and I, we are eukaryotic, E-U-K-A-R-Y-O-T-I-C. And eukaryotic, it's actually here, even though we're not gonna focus on it, eukaryotic in most cases means multicellular. I mean, you and I have millions, maybe even billions and trillions of cells, but each little tiny microbe is single cell. It's one cell, prokaryotic. All right, so first you're gonna read about some of the functions of bacteria. And we're gonna be focusing in this lab on bacteria even though there are other types of microbes, we're gonna focus on bacteria. Bacteria have some good functions and some bad functions. I think we tend to think of bacteria as bad, but there's so many good things that it does. So make sure that you review some of the positive functions of bacteria. They can help to decompose things in the world that is actually needed. Plants, many plants need bacteria in order to produce nutrients that they need. You and I, we have bacteria. We have millions of bacteria that help us digest food, that help us make vitamins that we could not live without. So bacteria, some are bad, yes, but we need them. There's so many, so many that serve good purposes. You are going to watch this video. In this video, it's kind of like a reverse apocalypse video. And it talks about what would happen if we lived in a completely bacteria-free world. And this helps us to point out what some of the good functions are. So you're gonna watch the video and then you're gonna answer some of these questions about the video. The second part of this lab talks about an application of bacteria and an application of bacteria that we use for good when we cook. So a lot of foods are fermented or a lot of foods use other bacteria for good purposes. So you're gonna watch this video 
and it talks about bread. So we use yeast in bread. Yeast is a microbe. Yeast is what helps the bread to rise. It's what helps the bread to give it soft texture. This video is gonna talk about cheese. It's gonna talk about wine. So I don't know how old you are across the interwebs here, but many of us enjoy an adult beverage. Um, so all of these foods actually utilize bacteria and microbes. So you're gonna watch the video and then answer the questions. These questions are fill in the blank and they come right from the video. So just watch the video carefully and you'll be able to answer the questions just fine. The next part of this lab just goes into a little bit of more detail about these bacteria. So you can see here's a picture of where we have bacteria in our body. It's really everywhere, but these are some of the biggest places where we have bacteria. These good bacteria, healthy, are sometimes called microbiota, or you might hear them called flora. These are the good bacteria. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we need bacteria. We have so much bacteria in our body, 10 times as much bacteria as we do cells. Remember, these, these bacteria are single-celled, prokaryotic, and they're so tiny, so we're just chock full of them. And a lot of these bacteria, most of them in fact, serve good functions, okay? However, as we know, some of the bacteria in our body can have negative effects and they can cause diseases. I've given you a list of some diseases that are caused by bacteria. Everyone has probably heard of E. coli. This is a particular bacteria um, that can lead to food poisoning. We get food poisoning from some sort of contaminated food, some kind of food that is contaminated with this bacteria. Here are some things that we can do to try and limit the risk of contamination. And I'm gonna ask you here to tell me another thing aside from that list, common sense here, that we can do to avoid getting that bacteria in our food and making us sick. Let's talk some science now, some lab stuff. When we identify bacteria, so we know in our body, we've got bacteria here, there, and everywhere. Well, sometimes researchers or doctors want to be able to identify a particular bacteria. We want to take a sample, whether it's from food, whether it's from your body, and we want to look at that sample under a microscope and try and determine what kind of bacteria it is. After all, that's how we learn about these bacteria. That's how we learn what it's structured like, whether it can be a good function or whether it serves a bad function. And by and large, one of the most common laboratory techniques for identifying bacteria is something called gram staining. We go through this process, we take a sample on a microscope slide, we add some stain, we do this, we do that, and we have two categories of bacteria. So pretty much all of the bacteria that we know about falls into a category of either being gram positive or gram negative. This process can tell us about the structure of that bacteria. As you can read here, gram positive bacteria have thick cell walls and they will stain purple through this gram staining process. So just by the way the stain seeps into the bacteria, it tells us about its cell wall, and that helps us to learn about what kind of bacteria it is. On the other hand, gram-negative bacteria have a thin, have a thinner cell wall, which makes the stain look a little bit different under a microscope. And more particularly, a gram-negative bacteria will stain pink or red. Again, make sure that you are studying what I'm circling or underlining in red. All right, so as we said, the gram-positive is gonna stain purple under the microscope and the gram-negative is gonna stain pink or red. You're gonna watch these two videos. You know me, I don't choose super long videos because I wanna keep your attention. From these videos, you're gonna be able to watch a gram stain in action. It's actually pretty cool. And what I'm gonna ask you to do here is in number 12, 
put these steps in order. So you might say, oh, they did this first, then they did that, then they did this, then they did that, and so forth. So you'll label them one through 11. These are not the right answers, but I'm just giving you an example. Okay, the last part of this lab is a little bit more cryptic, but it's a really important area of research in terms of microbiology, and it can help us particularly in criminology. So the necrobiome is the bacteria that are involved in the decay process of a dead body. And I know you're thinking, why on earth are we talking about this? Well, because we can use this in criminal investigations. In fact, um, I hate to be so glib, but uh, the University of Tennessee, I think, has the biggest one. They have a research facility called the, the Body Farm, where they people who have donated their body to science uh, particularly, they donate their body to this, and once they have passed on, their body is placed in or on the ground of this research facility at the University of Tennessee. And then scientists study, they take samples from their body, and they study this decay process. From this, scientists have identified five stages of the bacteria involved in the decay of the body. And from this, you know, if someone is murdered, we can look back and from our understanding of this bacterial process, we can identify, you know, this body was killed two days ago at approximately 10 a.m. or whatever. And that can really help us with this investigation. It's unfortunate, but this is a science that can help identify the people that are doing the bad stuff. So after you watch the video, you're gonna put numbers beside these symptoms, okay? And the numbers reference the stages. What happens at first after death, fresh, then bloat, active decay, advanced decay, and dry remains. So you'll put a one or a two or a three or a four or a five. You'll obviously be using some of these numbers over again to identify during what stage do each of these things occur in? And then there's one last fill in the blank question there. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, good luck and a great job on a, a, a great lab this semester.